everybody, it's Tamika. I am here to share with you a guest design team project for One Little Dreamer, which is RT Store. I will put in the description box a link to her Facebook page and her store so you guys can check out um, her awesome blingage. You will not regret, regret visiting the store. I will also put a video to the design team package that I received with all the yummy goodness and the previous video that I, the first video I did with the vintage mask turned out super, super cute. Really, really love it. So, um, today I have um, created a jewelry box with um, her goodies to hold the goodies from her store that will also serve as a piece on my shabby table. And then um, at the end of the video, I have a quick tutorial. Um, that I made so you guys can make your own jewelry box. Now I will warn you, it is a bit rough. I ran out of um, I was run out of charge and memory, so um, I would please uh, admonish you to watch the entire video first because there are mistakes and I went back and corrected them. So I don't want you to do it as I'm doing it because then you'll have to try to fix it later. So. Just watch the whole video first and then go back and then you'll know, oh, okay, that's where she messed up at, okay? Because I had done it twice already. So this is the cute little um, jewelry box that we created. Well, I did. Um, that you will try to create better than I did. Um, that I show you how to do in the tutorial. And it's just a simple um, box. You can add feet. You can add more pattern paper, of course, like I did on this box. But at least you have the gist and the base of how to create your own um, jewelry box from scratch. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Now this is what I created for um, as my guest design team project. Super, super cute. I used the Prima um, Romance paper collection. Gorgeous, gorgeous papers. Um, just give you an outside view of the box. And like I said, this is going to be used to house all of my RT bling, um, One Little Dreamer bling, on my table. And um, it's going to be super cute. So um, the top I used her gorgeous um, lace trim. I just cut it up. It's a long trim and I used two at the top and bottom. And then uh, the remaining two I used to kind of bring in or frame the acetate piece on the inside. So hopefully you guys can see that. Gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. And I'm going to just zoom in. And then I also used, if you can look at these really tiny gold pieces here, uh, not gold pieces, silver. Um, they are super, super cute. Let me see if I have a tiny one in here to share with you. Um, really, really nice pieces. Here's a smaller one. It's a, the one I use on the box is a little bit bigger, but isn't that adorable? Super pretty. So I used four of those to outline the box here. Let me try to zoom back out here. And um, I also trimmed the outside of the box. This is just trim, uh, trim from my stash. I used her gorgeous heart um, lace piece. I, believe, I do believe I have another one here where I can show you. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can use it as a full trim or you could, you know, cut it apart and make tiny little embellishments. Isn't that gorgeous? super super pretty so I cut off one of those hearts and then I put it in the front and then I also added one of her huge bling pieces on there look how it's very dimensional very very pretty and it's sh super 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 shiny very cute very very pretty I absolutely love how this turned out and then you can make several of these and give them as um, as a gift or you can, like I did, use it to house, um, you know, your the you know specialties that you don't want to use. Like I don't know if I'll ever use these because they're just so pretty. But I like to look at them, and that's why I made the acetate window because they're super gorgeous. And then plus, if I use anything out of this box, I know where it came from instead of putting them all in one. Oh, this is from this is my Artie box, so I know that when I do future videos using her bling pieces that I can reference her and then you know add a link in the description box in the future so um, but that's what I created and I think it turned out adorable you can always add feet to your box if you want use marble pieces or whatever you want to add some height to it um, this is a pretty heavy it's a pretty heavy stuff in here so I didn't want to add um, 
big, you know, metal filigree pieces, which I might was gonna do, but I just I'm just gonna add probably marbles at the bottom, maybe. I don't know. I might just leave it like this. But so this is what I created. I finished the inside of the box. First I wrapped it in white cardstock and then I finished the inside of the box with the Prima paper. And um, I hope you guys like it. So be sure to check out the links in the description box to her store and her Facebook page and the previous videos. Everything that I mentioned will be down below. Um, and if you want to connect with me, those links will be down there um, as well. So stay tuned for the tutorial and please, please remember to watch the whole video first and then um, come back and complete your project. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks guys so much for watching. Like the video if you like it. Bye. Okay, to start this project, you'll need um, a scoreboard, some scissors, um, something to lift up your double-sided tape. I use a craft knife. Um, you need some double-sided tape and some adhesive. You'll also need three sheets of um, cardstock. This is at eight and a half by eleven, and then um, this is going to be your what you're going to wrap your box in. So if you want to use pattern paper for that that's fine. I'm using uh, plain cardstock. So you need three sheets of eight and a half by eleven and then you'll need four pieces of um, cardstock. This is to line the inside so these two should match or coordinate at least. Um, you need four pieces cut at if you're doing the exact box that I'm doing which is going to be a five by five by two. You need four pieces cut at two by five you'll need a flange piece again cut it two by five uh, this is to cover the bottom so all these should match at these are cut at five by five you need two of those you need a piece of acetate or clear plastic cut it five by five and then um, you will need some pattern paper don't punch the hole in it yet I did this to save time but you whatever uh, you want your box cover lid to be on the inside and outside you will need that cut at um, Five by five, and you'll need two of them. And you need a piece of uh, two pieces of chipboard cut at five by five. And then you'll need four pieces of chipboard cut at two by five. And then finally, you'll need um, if you're going to have a window on yours, you'll need a die that's smaller, obviously, than five by five. And this, I'm using the Sizzix frame hanging with scallops. Okay, and I've already cut mine to save time. Also to save time, I am using hot glue, which I do not suggest that you use on this project. I suggest you use double-sided tape. Okay, we're going to start out with our eight and a half by eleven sheets of cardstock, combining or linking them together, and because it's going to wrap the jury box sides. And unless you have a really long piece of paper, you'll have to connect few of them together. So I'm using um, half inch double sided tape and that's what I'm going to use to connect my sides. So I've, I've added a piece here and I have to use my craft knife to get the, the top part going. So once you adhere that you want to take your second piece line it up with that um, double sided tape and adhere down and do the same thing for the end of that second piece. Add double sided tape to the end. This is um, the same tutorial that I did the how to make a any size chipboard box. I'll put the video on here so you guys can see that. All I'm doing with this video actually is just adding a lid. So, just this last connect the last piece. So now you should have three long pieces of whatever your base is. Okay, let's move some of this stuff out the way. Now you want to take your four pieces of chipboard, and like I said, mine is cut at two by five. That's how deep I want it and how wide I want it. This box. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to keep this box, but we'll see. No, I don't because I'm using hot glue. So what I'm going to do is, what you should do is add double-sided tape to the back here um, or some really ATG tape because you want to adhere this to 
the paper and you don't want it to crackle which it will do with this hot glue you want to leave enough space on the sides and the bottom when you put your chipboard down so let me show you I had to do that fast because I added the glue so you want to be able to fold this over the edge and fold this flap up so you want to leave enough space I think I have about an inch here and you want to continue to do that same um, layering all with all of these four pieces leaving about a one eighth about an eighth inch gap and that chipboard looks a little large but it's okay I might have been a little bit off okay line that up and one more So you have these lined all up, just like so, and yeah, that is shorter. That, um, I think I cut, this is two different pieces of chipboard, and I cut this with another trimmer, but it should still be two inches, but be that as it may, all your pieces should be two inches by five if you're cut using the same dimensions that I'm using. So at the end here, you just want to cut off um, the excess paper and save that for something else. And I just left enough to fold over, probably too much, but just cut a little bit off. Just want that enough to fold over. And then you want to cut the excess off on the other side. You don't have to worry about it being straight because it's going to be covered. So this is what you have right now. Okay, I'm just going to fold over where my pieces meet and this is some really thin chipboard it's a silhouette chipboard because I've um, I'm out of the other chipboard that I had obviously because it's that's it so um, you want some sturdy chipboard okay so that's folded now you want to take a um, bone folder let me get this off my scoreboard here and then you just want to go along the sides to help your crease along because you're going to fold this paper over. So, I really don't, I don't need to do this. I can fold this over, but because I'm not keeping this, you would want to do it. It'll help. I'm going to drop something on the tape. Okay, now fold over the sides that you just kind of guide it with the score tool. And fold over this side. So you should have something that looks like this. Okay. Now you want to fold over the ends. And you probably should crease it with your bone folder. Like that. Okay. Take your scissors. Where the intersection here meets, you want to cut right at that intersection so let me fold this over a bit um, let me cut it and then I'll show you just like that at a perfect angle okay you want to do that on the other side and then here so that's what you have now you want to cut out little triangles where these little pieces connect and that's to help fold it over so you just want to go just to the score line not on it or above it but right to it and cut a little triangle out just a tiny little triangle it's a little sliver piece and you want to do that to both sides and flip it over this last one okay so this is what you should have see see how this is coming up this is why you don't want to use hot glue but like I said I'm not keeping this so double-sided works best so it doesn't lift 
All right, so now you want to add double sided tape to all four of these, I mean, all eight, just the whole everything, all these pieces. Add double sided tape, even the ends. So um, once you do that, you want to flip over. Um, let's see. Well, okay, we'll do it this way. So let's pretend all these are double sided tapes because I'm going to hot glue them. So we'll do it right now. So this will be a double sided tape. Flip it over. Now one we're going to leave out. So just in case you're going ahead of the video, one we're going to leave out. So that's double sided taped. That's double sided taped. Okay. Tape that. Don't flip it over though. That's double sided tape. Ah. Okay, that's just one side. Where am I here? I'm going to actually add the tape here. And here. So now you want to grab your um, plain base chipboard. This one should be cut at 5x5. Five five, and you want to remove the tape. And you want to add it to this flange, leaving about um, a tiny little gap, like a sixteenth or eighth, just a little gap, just a tiny one, about a sixteenth. Okay, you want to flip over the top. It doesn't matter which one of these spaces you use, but I just like to use this third one for some odd reason. Now this is your lid, so if you made it exactly like mine, it should, doesn't matter um, where you want you know like a if you made it a square five and a half by five and a half but if you made it five and a half by six and you want to make sure that this matches up size because you're gonna flip it over it's gonna go over here but my box um, is gonna go on this uh, my paper is gonna go on the side so I need to change mine to be on I think my box is gonna be See, my paper has a little thing on it, a little angel, and I don't want her to get covered. So, it's going to be like this. Okay. So, if you didn't do that, I just cut my paper so it can have a little angel on, on the thing because I thought it was super cute. Um, I'm going to have to cut mine down a little bit because it's going to go, it's going to run into my piece. You don't have to do this if you if you didn't. If your piece matches, if you got a solid piece or you put your piece in the middle, which I should have done for this tutorial instead of trying to be all fancy, um, then it doesn't matter. But I'm going to cut this down. Cut it down just a little bit. Okay. All right. So you want to adhere your top lid to that space. Hopefully I didn't confuse you guys. Alright, there. Now remember I had to cut that down because it interfered with my pattern. I wouldn't suggest you do that on your first box. Okay. So, now you have all that. Now, um, at this point, you want to cover your bottom. Your 5x5 five five piece of paper. Get your flat. I mean your... Um, base sheet that you picked out to cover your chipboard and adhere it on there. Okay, that's it here. Now you want to grab your acetate and adhere that to your chipboard. I would use clear um, like uh, glossy accents or something. I would not suggest using hot glue. Oops. So you have that. Now you want to take your inside piece. And how I did this is I took um, 
two pieces of pattern paper that correlate. This is going to be my top piece and this is going to be my inside piece. And I put it back to back, facing back to back. And then I added my chipboard. You want to do all this at the same time. Cut it at um, five by five and do them all at the same time. Run it through your die cutter and then that way everything lines up perfectly. So I've done that. I've already, of course, have my chipboard. So now, I want that piece, my inside lid piece, I'm going to adhere. Use this tape. And then you just want to carefully put it on there. Make sure you don't see any of that chipboard. Okay. Flip it to the front so you can add your top piece, whatever your cover lid's going to be. is since I have my die cut on this side it was a little bit different but there we go okay we're gonna flip back to the inside that should be done there okay now remember you have double-sided tape on that side right on the side well you want the double-sided tape on the side where you have your base piece so obviously I did that backwards but this is where your double side tape should be and I am not doing this tutorial over so we're gonna delete that Let's see if I can get it off okay so double sided tape double sided tape on all this so hopefully you did not go ahead of the video and you have to do this over. Apologize. So, at this point, um, we're going to adhere the top pieces. That's what we should have did first. We're going to adhere the top pieces. One, you're going to use double-sided tape all the way through. Okay. Leave one end open on the side here. So I'm going to leave the other end open and adhere this down. Okay, I need a glue stick. And now, okay, now that that's, you have double sided tape here, you're going to close this up like that. But first, before you do that, grab your inner cover sheets that you're going to use to cover your chipboard on the inside and add adhesive to it. You can use ATG for this one. That's going to go on the inside there. And then you just want to continue this all the way down. Inside there. Inside here, and then that flange piece so if you're going to use pattern paper you want to put the flange on before to hide it obviously so fold it in half you can use your scoreboard cut the angles off like this okay and then you want to attach it to here. Now you do have the piece, the secure piece here, which you should be fine. But if you want to do another, just to make sure, you would adhere that. Now this is a little big for what I have to do, so I'm going to cut one of the pieces shorter. I just probably should have just stuck with the normal, the normal box that I did. But this I've already done this tutorial twice now, so no do-overs. I'm going to add double-sided tape to that side, but I didn't. I added hot glue. 
So then you want to layer this piece on top of that to hide that. Or you can add another piece of pattern paper. Put that right here at the bottom there. Now you can add this piece of cardstock to cover the space. That didn't stay very well. Okay. All right. So now you can close these up, which that should be double sided tape. But of course, I have my glue here. And right here, this down at the bottom. And you want to do that all the way around. So, double sided tape here. And then the last one. Close that up. And then this little piece with the double sided tape on it is what you're going to use to finish off your box. I'm just going to add the glue and then line it up and close it. Now you can add your pattern paper on top. And then let's give this some give. It's a little tight because I used hot glue, which is not very forgiving, but not very flexible. So there you should have your box. So I know this was a rough tutorial, but hopefully you guys got it. And then, oh, in the final piece, you would add your back. That final uh, five, five by five piece you added to the back to cover over the flanges. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And like I said, I did this tutorial two times already. This is the one I just finished um, filming. And then I forgot to leave the flange the bottoms out so I'm very I'm at the very end and I'm like okay now all you got to do is connect and I've already sealed them but this was a pretty box too and this is the way that I did it at the beginning super cute but hopefully you guys got it at least the gist of it if you have any questions um, feel free to um, leave them below and um, thanks guys so much for watching be sure to check the description box in uh, below for the links to RT store and um, thanks guys for watching bye